Okay, let's see how we can simplify this nested square root. So we have this square root instead of another one, that's why it's called a nested square root. But anyway though, you know the deal, please pause the video and try this first. Done? Okay. So here's the deal. Whenever we have square root in a rational expression like this, let's just go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by its conjugate. So let's go ahead and just multiply the top by the square root of 5 plus square root of 8 plus 9. So this right here stays the same, but this, we have to change that to a plus and then 3. So we do that on the top, and of course we'll do that on the bottom, square root of 5 plus square root of x plus 9, and then plus 3. And we will see how it goes. So the purpose of multiplying the top and bottom by the conjugate is so that we can use this difference of two squares formula. Remember, when we have a minus b times a plus b, this right here is actually really nice because this right here gives us a squared minus b squared. And usually I would say, I think we do it from, left, from right to left a lot more often because that will be the factoring formula, the factoring of two different squares. But the goal right here is that, you see we have a minus, we multiply a plus. So it's like a minus b times a plus b, and we will produce a squared minus b squared. So that's the idea of using the conjugate. All right, so with that being said, we can just square the first term. So we get five square root of square root of x plus nine, right? This outer square root just get canceled it. And then we have the minus, and then we will have to square the three. So three squared is nine. So that's good. And then the bottom, let's just leave it. Parentheses x minus seven times the parentheses square root five plus square root of x plus nine, and then plus three. What can we do? On the top, we can do 5 minus 9. Sure. So on the top, we have actually just square root of x plus 9 and then minus 4. Okay. And we have a square root expression again, so why don't we try to use the conjugate one more time? So right here, let's go ahead and multiply the top by square root of x plus 9, and then this right here turns out to a plus and then 4. So let's go ahead and do the same thing one more time. Here, square root of x plus 9 and then plus 4. Oh, yeah, it's, it's fitting everything. So that's good. So on the top, again, we use that formula. So we square this and the square root, square root cancel. So x plus 9 and then minus 4 squared is 16. And then over all this thing, right? So we have x minus 7 times square root of 5 plus square root of x plus 9 plus 3 and then square root of x plus 9 and then plus 4. Whew, but guess what? 9 minus 16 is minus 7. So on the top right here, in fact, we actually have just x minus 7. That also is x minus 7. So cancel, cancel. And ladies and gentlemen, we only have a 1 on the top. And we have this, which is the square root of 5 plus square root of x plus 9, and then plus 3 times the other, right, x plus 9 plus 4. Yeah. And some of you guys might have noticed that this right here is actually a very common expression in calculus, but I just want to make some videos that the algebra that you really need to focus when you're doing like some calculus questions. But just take away all the calculus, you have to focus on how to use the conjugate to simplify the expressions. So as you can see, the answer is actually A, right? I'm not going to box it because I boxed it right here already. So that's it.